So you're the leaders of China and much like how the US believed that it was their destiny to colonize and dominate North America in the 1800s, you believe that it is your duty to take the throne from the US and become the world's greatest superpower. And back in the good old days of Chinese dynasties, you just invade the enemy by force. But here's the problem, as much as you hate to admit it, you know that if your military was to go up against the US military head on in conventional warfare, the US would probably win. Mix that with all the other complications that comes with a modern day world war and conventional warfare just doesn't seem like the smart move. You need to be sneaker, you need to explore other methods of unconventional warfare. In fact, you're so well aware of this problem that two of your generals even wrote an entire handbook on it called Unrestricted Warfare. The goal is not to defeat the enemy overnight, but to slowly tear them down brick by brick while having your intentions fly right under their radar. Uh, how much of this has to do with China realizing we cannot go against US when it comes down to power of the military? They'll crush us. How much credibility do you give to that? 100%. 100%. And then what do you know, in late November 2019, the shiny new virus was discovered in Wuhan that most of the science community agrees has a natural origin. This thing clearly jumped from an animal species probably the third week of November to humans. We could not have crafted a virus like this to do what it's doing. I mean, we don't have the creative imagination or the skill set. If somebody said, okay, I want to find a virus that will take out a lot of people, okay? This one, Mother Nature does it so much better than we could ever do it. Now at first glance, this is pretty bad. It's spreading human to human in a city with more people than New York, you're probably gonna have to shut down the area or maybe the entire country if things get worse. But more important than people dying and stuff, this might hurt your power over the plebs you rule over. Now you being a master at this game of power, even though this is a pretty bad situation that's gonna inevitably damage your nation, where there's a crisis, there's an opportunity. So you get together with your other rulers and come up with a brilliant strategy to make the most out of these tough times. But most importantly, to get one brick closer to your destiny of world domination. You implement this plan, a few months passes by, and what do you know? All your competitors' economies are at a devastating standstill. Your factories and economy took a rough hit, but are back up and running already. And who are all your competitors, including your arch nemesis, the US, going to for supplies? You. And here's how you did it. What China's leaders did is a crime against humanity. If it isn't, then there is no such concept. In China, where authorities have welded people into homes to keep them inside. <laughs> or tied people to posts because they didn't wear a face mask. To me, these are equivalence to acts of war on the part of China. That when you look at what they in fact did, there is no other explanation for it other than um, that they intentionally wanted this to spread beyond China. Now, it's important to realize that your enemy, the US, is a worthy opponent. After all, if they weren't, you would have beaten them already. <laughs> The US obviously have their strengths, but you also have some very unique advantages that they'll never be able to compete on. The biggest being that you don't play by the petty rules of freedom of speech or freedom of press. You're not pushed around by the people you rule over. Unlike the weak leaders in the US, you get things done faster. You also don't have to play by the rules of a petty free market. So you can do things like ban US tech companies, subsidize Chinese firms, let some companies in, but on the grounds that they share all their trade secrets with China and many other tech Tactics. On top of that, since you rigorously control an economy of nearly 1.4 billion people, you've made some powerful Americans filthy rich, turning them into sympathizers for your regime. Once this virus gets out of hand, you're more than happy to use draconian tactics to contain the virus that Western democracies <laughs> We'll have a hard time doing like welding people's doors shut, tying people to poles if they don't wear a face mask, using fish nets to catch offenders. Oh, a disabled boy died because his father was forced into quarantine, leaving him alone? Whatever. But most importantly, you have to think of yourself like the big banks in the US back in the 2008 recession that were too big to fail. The world depends on you. The world is entangled with your economy. Whatever you do, they're not going to retaliate because if you fail, they fail. See, in every conflict, every war, every negotiation, whoever has the most leverage wins. And it's all these advantages that add up to all the leverage you have to work with in order to turn this crisis into your gain. And work with it, you do. Now, 
Now this virus came up at the perfect time. You and the US were already in an ever escalating trade war together. The US was upset with some of your less than fair business tactics like constantly stealing their intellectual property. They felt threatened by your rise of power and the gradual fall of theirs. Both of you guys ended up in a race that ever increasing tariffs on imports for products from both countries among other things. And although this trade war is annoying, you don't care. You're on a mission to outshine the US anyway so you don't have any plans on stopping your aggression, but it would be wise to at least settle on some kind of agreement with them to calm them down before they start getting too aggressive. And don't worry, if anything, you can always sign the deal now, make it look like you're cooperating, and then worry about whether or not you want to actually fulfill the deal in the future. In late November, word had already gotten off of the mainland that there was a virus in Wuhan. By that time, you were already in negotiations with the US to come up with some kind of truce for a few months now and are almost at a resolution. That resolution comes on December 13th with you and Trump announcing an 18 month phase 1 deal to end this trade war mayhem. Part of that deal includes some laughable stuff like you promising to buy nearly 400 billion dollars in US products and you promising to respect their intellectual property. Now obviously, you have no intentions of guaranteeing the buying of 400 billion dollars in goods or to all of a sudden stop stealing their intellectual property like you've been doing for years on end, but if you sign this agreement and just blatantly break it, it's gonna cause some drama. Every nation you do business Business with is gonna lose a lot of trust in you. By now on December 13th, you've known how dangerous this virus is for a good four weeks. That's four weeks of testing, monitoring, and analyzing to see just how contagious this thing is while simultaneously suppressing the knowledge of it. So what do you do? Six weeks later, the trade truce was signed with an out clause. A very clever out clause that the Chinese made sure was in there that said if there was any kind of act of God pandemic, then they didn't have to make good on what they had committed to buy from the United States. And like a chess grandmaster, two weeks later, you announced the first case of the virus. Although you already took advantage of this virus to have an out for that ridiculous trade deal, the real question is, why should only China be crippled by it? But the problem is, if other countries know how contagious this is, they'll take it seriously and be more cautious and therefore won't get crippled. So if you want to level the playing field, you gotta get them in on this corona action. So what do you do? You form a government committee on the virus and do what you're best at, controlling the narrative. You suppress medical whistleblowers. And now the Chinese doctor who sounded the alarm on novel coronavirus has died from the disease he was so concerned about. The government officials then decided to control the flow of information by ordering the doctor to be put back on life support despite the fact he was dead and to change official media reports from death to in critical condition. You get your buddies in the World Health Organization involved and stress that no, it doesn't transfer human to human, just stay calm. Everything will be all right. Where WHO, I'm sure, knew that there were. How could they not know about it? I mean, they're a World Health Organization. They've got doctors. We would have seen many more cases outside China by now. The Chinese government is to be congratulated for the extraordinary measures it has taken to contain the outbreak. But most importantly, like everything else you share with the world, you underreport your infection and death statistics so other countries won't be able to make heads or tails of what to do. A toddler could tell you, based on what happened in Italy, based on what's happened in Germany and in France and now in the UK. There's no way in a city the size of New York, 11 million people, that there were so few cases. It's impossible. Since you've been studying this virus behind closed doors this whole time, you know that the best way for this virus to spread is through international travel. So obviously... Beijing um, was really working very hard to prevent countries from imposing travel restrictions on China. Once you got all this up and running, Mother Nature will take care of itself. You'll implement the extreme measures to contain the virus that Western countries won't be willing to do. The virus will cripple your competitors' economies as it did to yours so you're not the only one suffering. And since you had a head start and you're so innovative with your quarantine measures, you'll be the first big economy to open back up while everyone else suffers. And the best part? Because you have so much leverage, because you're the world's factory, because every other economy is tied to yours, there will hardly be any retaliation. 
Welcome to the Watch the End Club. I have tried my very best to make sure that this video is as accurate as I can possibly make it, but with new information coming out every single day, if I happen to like, you know, say something wrong in this video, please let me know in the comments below. I am 100% okay with being wrong. All the sources for my videos are always linked in the video description if you didn't know that already. Can we ever know for sure that these were the real intentions of the leaders of China? Of course not. But based on their actions and letting their actions speak for themselves, this does seem like the most plausible scenario. Do you agree with this video? Do you think it was trash? Let me know in the comments below. A lot of the interviews that you saw in this video were from the channel Valuetainment with Patrick Bet David, and he has some of the best interviews on YouTube in my opinion which you can also check out in the sources in the video description. If you've watched this far you're obviously interested in this channel so why not consider subscribing like right now with the red button below. I make video essays like this on the most controversial and provocative stuff in the world of business every single week and you should join. But before you go I have a very big announcement that a few of you have been requesting but before we get into it I am proud to announce that you can finally join the Tran Mafia family, also known as Patreon. I was actually hesitant on starting a Patreon, but thanks to these beautiful people that asked me in the comments below, the Tran crime family is now a thing. So if you've always wanted to join the mob like me and you want to help this channel's goal of acting as the gateway drug to curiosity, consider becoming a mafioso. You can start out as an associate, a soldier, or you can go all in and start out as a capo or a captain. This is for the true supporters that want to support this channel financially in the best way possible with the link in the video description. Also moving forward, I will only be referred to as Don Tran or Godfather. In fact, I will only respond to comments that refer to me as Don Tran or Godfather, not Jake. Not Jack. But in all seriousness, guys, if you're watching this right now, you guys are my biggest supporters and I appreciate you guys like more than I can explain in words. I finally found an excuse to wear a suit in the video. So, you know, here we are. That is all I have for this video today. Thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome. I've been Don Tran and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.